Guys, y'all know I would not be caught dead driving this little mini truck. But uh, Jamie brought it out to the pasture when they did the dentist work yesterday. She parked it here by the barn. And as she was leaving, uh, it has run out of battery. So what I did was brought the little charger out. And it's a little portable charger. And I got the battery all charged up. So now I'm going to have to drive this thing back where it belongs. So, Lord, Lord help me. Good morning, folks. Lester here. And uh, today we're at the J.L. Ranch property. I've been told to stop saying J and L. It's J.L. But J.L. sounds like I'm saying jail. Like incarcerated jail. And it's not jail. It's J.L. But it's easier to, for me to say J and L. As to avoid the confusion. But nonetheless, today we're at... Oh, funny story. My accent is so bad that my poor son, Lex, made a video and the captions said that I was saying bad words. And I wasn't saying bad words. I'm going to show y'all a snippet of the video. Just read the captioning. But you also know me so well to know that I would not say bad words in my son's video. Okay? And I also say one last thing. It's very windy here today. It is so darn windy. And you might not be able to hear much of what I'm going to say. But enjoy the video anyway. We're doing tractor work at the JL, the JNL Ranch property. And I got my sweet girl with me. Hey, sweet girl. <laughs> and uh, Sadie's here too. She's hiding under the RV. Y'all enjoy. Come on. I'm pretty sure you all know what this means. Yes, yellow containers are for diesel, red are for gasoline. Today, my friends, we are building fires. all of these limbs, uh, branches, and trees uh, piled up. This is from all the work that Uriel did on the bulldozer last week. Now, I don't know if this stuff is dry enough to burn yet. I'm thinking that it may not, but uh, I'd rather go ahead and get it burnt now while the grass around us is nice and green. We have a nice breeze blowing. 
from the south towards the north so i don't have any fear of the fires catching out into the into the woods over there i don't suspect it'll catch out anyway but just in case you better do it you have to plan your fires y'all you have to plan your fires and the reason i know that is from bad experiences okay i'm just gonna say it and i don't mind admitting it that i've learned a thing or two from making lots and lots of mistakes when it comes to fire making and y'all <laughs> you all who follow the channel for a while know that i'm not good with fire even though i have a little thing inside of me uh, i think it's in my dna code i just like to make fires and i'm not alone in that there's a lot of men who like to make fires and I would like to find out from you all in the comments, do you have a partner or have you been married to a man who just, or do you, or do you kind of like to have a fire? There's something about building a fire that's very empowering and takes me back to a, to a simpler time. Yeah, back to my caveman days. All right, now this is the back pond. Uh, we always joke that this is the Jake pond because it's the pond that looks, you wanna ride, sweetie? This is the pond that looks just like Jake's pond. And I told you guys a while back, I was a little bit concerned about all of the green stuff growing in the water. Now we've not treated it yet. I know that Jake has bought a, a chemical that you can put into your water that is supposedly safe for fish, safe for your animals. It's not going to, hurt any of our aquatic life at all or animals that swim or drink from the pond but it will kill a lot of that green stuff growing in the water my fear is that if we don't treat that now and let me go ahead and kind of show you a little bit i think that the water must be deep enough over there to where this stuff doesn't get enough sunlight to grow across the entire pond but if we're not careful it will grow around the entire sides of the pond so thick that our cows cannot easily drink, and you don't want to have your cows drinking stuff like that anyway. So I I don't really like to play with Mother Nature, but at the same time, I have to also look for my cows and my dogs and you know their best interest. And I just think that I'd rather have a cleaner pond, free from a lot of that green stuff. Uh, I just want to make sure that we're able to keep our aquatic life and plenty of oxygen in the water. Because here's the thing, I know they serve a purpose, right? It has to serve a purpose, doesn't it? But I can't let it take over my pond either because the pond and the clean water also serves us a purpose. And remember, we still offer fresh water to our cows from the, uh, from the water troughs, but they do like to come to the water. You can see all the footprints along it. They do take drinks from the water. They take baths in the water and cool off in the water. So we want to keep a nice clean pond and Christmas agrees that we want to have a nice clean pond and she's going to help me by taking, yeah, she's going to take all the sticks out of the water. Uh, sweetie, you, never mind. I want to show y'all what's going on here in the back corner. Oh, hold on girls. Oh, girls, girls, hold on, sweeties. Um, I want to show you what's going on here in the back corner. I spotted this a couple of days ago and you remember we were doing a live video when we saw some cows had gotten out from my neighbor's pasture. And now my neighbor does not live here. He leases this property and he runs cows. This is the pasture where Toby, the other black bull lives. And so what I noticed the neighbor had done was come over here. Let me drive in this corner and I'll show you. He drove or somehow walked or whatever he did to get over here. But he put up this really bizarre wiring. It's like cyclone fence wire that he put and he attached it to my corner post and he went down to the creek. So let me go and turn this off and I'll show you. I'm having to watch my step because guys, snakes are out. Snakes are out. Okay, so what he's done over here, I'm guessing that what his cows were doing, where they were coming from his pasture, walking right alongside the creek right here. You can see where, where they've been walking around and coming back behind my fencing w walking right along through here and i'm guessing finding their way out so what he did was come down with some cyclone fencing y'all this is some 
six foot cyclone fencing. Careful, sweetie. And he's attached it to that tree over there, just staple it to that tree and attach it over here to my post. So if his cows do come through and around, they won't walk down. Here's the problem though. Well, I don't guess it's a problem because they still can't get into our little buffer zone because of the old fencing right through here. So, okay, well, I guess that's what he's gonna do to keep his cows home. But isn't it bizarre that cows would be out and about trying to roam this time of year? I understand in the wintertime, if the cows are not getting enough to eat, they, they will absolutely roam. But uh, right now, with everything being green, that surprises me cows would still be out on the roam. Unless, in fact, they're in heat and they're trying to mix it up with Tex and Waylon. And that could happen too, y'all. You never know. Hi, Rita. Hi, girls and boys. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> Rita, are you being sweet today, baby? Are you being sweet or are you being naughty? Uh-huh. I don't believe a word out of your mouth, baby girl. Look out behind you, sweetie. You got trouble. I love you, Rita. I love you too, Stormy. Your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Lester. <laughs> yeah, something like that.